how is Siemens looking towards uh, 2021? And not just for Siemens, but generally in the industry as well. What do you think is going to happen uh, next year onwards and beyond? Um, will we see some of the processes and practices change? Or will people go back to the old way of doing things again? You know, uh, how, how, and uh, how is Siemens you know, going to be leading this change as well in the future? Yeah, like I said before, um, actually even before the uh, pandemic uh, happened, um, the world was already on uh, factory of the future as well mm -hmm. as you know going towards a uh, a uh, you know a, uh, a connected digital enterprise. So if you ask me beyond 2021, I think um, these are the some of the key changes that will still continue to evolve. Number one, the rate of change will be even faster than ever. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, uh, you know, uh, change uh, that is going to accelerate, I think people are going to rely more and more on the digital, digital twin concept because you can't make physical changes fast enough to cope with, uh, you know, the demand of the world and the market. And, you know, and, and, and with every crisis, it comes an opportunity. And those who are able to leverage uh, the crisis to turn that into opportunity will be the eventual winner. And those who don't, um, may not exist, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, yes. and, um, and I think social distancing will continue to be one of the key concern. Um, some of my uh, clients actually tell me that, well, you know, but if we have a vaccine um, that could happen in a year or two, let's say, you know, um, in a year we get a vaccine, um, I say, well, you still will have social distancing built into manufacturing because we don't know when there will be the next pandemic, another, you know, such thing happen. And uh, I think people learn from this lesson, right? That uh, during this pandemic, um, they were not able to operate factories safely because um, the social distancing was never planned in uh, the manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, plan as, uh, before, right? So um, to that aspect, uh, Zeman has been actually working uh, very well. So we have actually put in so so-called a system that is actually, uh, we call it the real-time uh, location uh, tracking system, that we are able to track the workers and then to make sure that social distancing is being enforced. And then you can actually look at the heat map of your, you know, the, um, the, uh, the, the, the social distance of the worker and then you can make changes to your manufacturing um, uh, plan as well. But that was never been done before. I think the, you know, we will continue to have social distancing in mind and I think one of the other important thing is um, the um, strategy for search manufacturing. Mm -hmm. When I say search manufacturing, because when the next pandemic comes in, we don't know what is going to be um, the, uh, the, the things that are going to be in short, short supply and in high demand. And I think manufacturers will have to start thinking about how do you, how do you actually handle search manufacturing? What is the strategy? How do you make your manufacturing line flexible enough um, to adapt to you know uh, different situations and um, to meet the requirement uh, of the market uh, in the case of a search manufacturing uh, scenario. And I think uh, one other thing is the strengthening of the resilience of the manufacturer. I think you started by asking me about yep. um, how important is resilience. I think people will start to look more towards resilience. Of course, manufacturers still want to be efficient. Um, mm -hmm. I believe uh, the uh, resilience will have to be built in somewhere, you know, in the, uh, in the overall strategy for um, uh, manufacturing. And I believe that the, it will become much more decentralized with, uh, you know, the uh, current situation because of the disruption during the uh, pandemic. Um, a lot of manufacturers were really shut down because of the uh, you know, shortages of the uh, parts and supplies that were mainly focused uh, around China. And we, we see a shift of all this manufacturing, manufacturing uh, supply chain in Southeast Asia, into Vietnam, into Malaysia, into Indonesia. Um, I think um, that will be uh, a lot more, I would say, well distributed and spread out um, rather than having a uh, all eggs in one basket uh, situation like before. So I, I think these are some of the key areas I believe that will happen in the next, uh, you know, going forward from uh, 2021. All right, great. I just got one more question. I was wondering if you can share with me, uh, who are your primary customers uh, that you're looking at in, 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 a, uh, in ASEAN especially? Which industries and maybe you can share some of your customer uh, success stories as well? 
Okay, well, in, in ASEAN, we, we, you know, I, I you know, uh, under Southeast Asia, um, you know, where I'm responsible for, um, mm -hmm. we have about uh, 11 countries. Mm -hmm. And so every country has got, a, you know, a different uh, focus. Uh, mm -hmm. However, I think uh, the common theme is that um, we have, in Siemens, we have a really, uh, you know, key focus around um, both discrete and process industry. So mm -hmm. in the area of discrete manufacturing, um, we have been really focused around uh, automotive. Uh, mm -hmm. Our customers in automotive uh, OEM uh, mm -hmm. include big names uh, like Vinfast, who mm -hmm. actually uses uh, our entire suite of uh, portfolio, as well as our automation engineering. Um, and um, um, Proton is also one of our, you know, our, our key customer in Malaysia. So, in fact, we have got um, the uh, two brand OEM brands, uh, you know, within uh, Siemens. Um, mm -hmm. Electronic manufacturing is also one uh, one of the key area for us. Um, uh, you know, we actually cover a whole lot of uh, semiconductor and uh, electronic manufacturing yeah. companies. Um, however, in Southeast Asia headquarter companies, um, we have. Um, I just mentioned Music uh, mm -hmm. We also have, uh, for example, um, Ascatech. So, um, so and so forth. I think there are so many to name, right, uh, for electronic manufacturing because it's one of our, our key area. Um, and um, aerospace, um, we know that, uh, you know, in the last uh, one year, the world kind of uh, had a, uh, you know, a, a very low demand for engine. But we count uh, aerospace as one of our most, uh, I would say that, uh, uh, advanced uh, adopted uh, customers because there were a lot of adoption of advanced manufacturing in aerospace. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and many of the suppliers uh, for, you know, for, for all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, aerospace company uh, around Southeast Asia, um, they are actually using, uh, leveraging uh, our advanced manufacturing portfolio. Um, the other one that I really are uh, very uh, interesting to talk about uh, is the um, food and beverage. All right. It's actually a late comment for us mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we don't see that yeah. many of them because they, they have not been very forefront, you know, been very you know, at the forefront of technology adoption. Um, but we have seen many of these uh, FMB as well as consumer uh, product companies, um, for example, like Top Glove, um, like uh, Greenfield, you know, in uh, Indonesia, which is making uh, dairy. Um, and uh, as well as CP food in Thailand, um, they are actually, you know, um, adopters of our, you know, digital innovation platform. Now, I have given you a lot of big names, um, but I also want to mention that um, at the back of those big names, we actually have a very big, sizable uh, portfolio of SMEs. Mm -hmm. They are actually the backbone of our business in Southeast Asia, as you know that. Uh, it's yeah, all right. Yeah, SMEs are, are big here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are very passionate about SME. Um, actually, uh, not just on SMEs, we also have a startup program, for example, um, to offer to startups um, to help them to uh, have a uh, you know a uh, entry point into the uh, digital transformation. And just now, the question that you asked me about cost, right? Mm -hmm. Um, as I said before, um, the investment mindset uh, has to be there. But even for SMEs, we have a scaled down, you know, a digital twin that is suitable for SME. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, that is a different cost point compared to the, uh, you know, the big, uh, you know, uh, the enterprises um, to leverage. And it is no less, you know, uh, much of a digital twin compared to the other, uh, you know, solution. So it all depends on the entry point of uh, the uh, you know the customer that is trying to come in, you know into this digital transformation journey, and then we prescribe um, the best you know that we see fit uh, in order to meet uh, their requirement. 